In this Fusion 360 foundational concepts lesson, we will cover the structure of a Fusion 360 design. We call this a unified modeling environment because Fusion 360 allows for sketches, bodies, components, sub-assemblies, and assemblies all to live in one design. If you are familiar with other CAD tools, you may refer to these as different files, assemblies, and parts. Let me tell you, Fusion 360 is completely different, and once you get used to the changes, it's way better. Traditionally, I would spend a lot of time planning assemblies, making sure each part was a different file. But in Fusion 360, I can either stick with this workflow, or go to a more flexible approach of starting a design, then turning bodies into components when convenient in the design process. So let's dive in. Notice when I start the sketch, we get a sketch folder in the browser on the left of Fusion 360 with a sketch in that folder. As I add more sketches, more sketches will populate one of the sketch folders, but we'll dive further into that in a minute. Let's jump ahead in the creation of this sketch. Make sure to watch the sketch video to learn more about sketching. Now, let's turn this 2D sketch into 3D geometry. Many features in Fusion 360 have different operation types in the feature. These include join, cutting, or intersecting with existing geometry. But more importantly, notice these last two options of creating a new body or a new component. With this first sketch, I will choose to make a new body. Most of the time, I use bodies as tools to change geometry. Notice I get a folder under the top level design for bodies. This folder acts similar to the sketch folder. Now instead this time, let's take this second sketch and make a new component. Watch the icon at the top of the browser. Notice it turns into an assembly icon and we get a new component at the bottom of the browser. This approach to assembly modeling is called top-down assembly modeling. This is where components are designed in context of each other. Now I'll create a second component with the same sketch and notice I get another component in the browser. I always recommend naming everything early in the design process. Now let's take a minute to talk about components. Components can contain multiple bodies, or even multiple components. Now, what is the difference between components and bodies? Here are some reasons components are different from bodies. Notice when I expand this component, it has its own origin and bodies folder. It may also include sketches, construction geometry, and so much more. Another main difference comes when trying to have assembly motion. Components can have joints created between them, where bodies cannot. Thus, if trying to make your assembly move, make sure to create components out of the pieces of geometry that move relative to each other. The next major difference is extremely important. Components have part names, part numbers, and descriptions. More importantly, these are properties that will appear on a parts list in Fusion 360 drawings. Components can also be instanced. Watch I can select this component, copy and paste it. Now I'm going to make a joint to make sure the shaft is in the correct location. Again, I will use a slider joint to make sure I get the correct assembly motion since this is another component. Now watch this. When I make a change to one of the pattern instances, the other reflects the same changes. Also notice the component names are the same, but the instance count is counted up for the second instance. This is great if you want to have two components to always be identical. But sometimes I want to make a copy of a component and make changes to only one. In that case, I could right click on the assembly and select Paste New. Notice I get a new component name with a parentheses of one and the instance is now one. This is because the newly pasted body is independent from the original. Finally, components can be isolated where bodies cannot be without manually hiding all the rest of the geometry. Isolating helps make it easier to work on one component, especially when you get many components in your assembly. Now isolating just hides all the rest of the geometry. To unisolate, I can just right click on the component and select unisolate. Now check this out. I can activate a component by clicking the circle next to the component name. Notice the component I activated stays opaque while the rest of the components turn transparent. Activating a component ensures that sketches and work planes belong to the correct activated component. As you can see, this newly created sketch belongs to this component, and it gets a sketch folder. Now let's activate the top level design. Next I'm going to turn on the color component cycling toggle to further understand the different components. Notice the features in the timeline also get a color, which corresponds to the components in the browser. 
Infusion 360 features can affect multiple components at the same time. Notice as I apply this fillet to these two different components, the feature in the timeline will get two colors corresponding to both components. Fusion 360 intelligently figures out which component the feature should affect. Finally, I want this cut extrude to only affect one of these components. In this case, we will hide the component we don't want to get affected during the extruded command. Then after, we could show the hidden component and notice the cut extrude did not affect that hidden component. Okay, this next topic is a bit tricky, but let's examine this new component feature. When I created the first component, I received a new component feature in the timeline. When I created the two bodies, I did not get a feature in the timeline, but I did get two bodies in the bodies folder. Fusion 360 gives us the flexibility to turn bodies into components anywhere in the design process, but there are some advantages and disadvantages to doing this. So let's take those two bodies and select Create Components from Bodies. Now we can apply a fillet to these two newly created components. Now let's go back to activating components. When I activate components, the timeline is filtered for the features after the component is created. So let's activate the component we just created. As you can see, the only thing in the timeline is the fillet because the feature was after the component was created. The extrude that was used to create the body was performed at the top level of the design. Now let's activate the component we created way earlier. Notice that there are more features in this list. That is because the component was created before these features. The practice of creating components early in the design process is known as Rule 1 in the Fusion 360 community. Rule 1 states that you should create a component and activate it before continuing your design. This is so sketches, features, construction geometry, and more are in the component. One main reason for this workflow is for reusing this component in a different design. Let's right click the component out of the browser and select Save Copy As. This will allow me to save this component into a project and reuse it in a different design. Warning, this does not retain a link to the original once the component is saved out. Now watch when I open that component, the sketches, features, and more will be in the timeline. So if you are planning to reuse components, make sure to use Rule 1. Up until this point, we have been designing internally to this Fusion 360 design, also known as top-down design. While I have been designing, my teammate has been working on another Fusion 360 design. I can locate that component in the data panel, then right click and select insert into current design. Notice this insert the component at the top level. If I would like to put that linked component under a subassembly, make sure to activate the level you want the component to reside in. But don't worry, Fusion 360's assembly structure is extremely flexible. At any time, I can click and drag components in the browser to restructure my assembly. Notice this action places a feature in the timeline for this move. So that completes the lesson on the Fusion 360's design structure. Fusion 360 allows for several different methods to create components both early in the design process for assembly planning and later in the design process to enable more conceptual design to occur. Make sure to watch the rest of the Fusion 360 foundational concepts to understand Fusion 360 even further.